Hello and welcome to Yes It Is The Buck Show. You haven't stumbled across one of those dodgy websites by mistake and I'm certainly not Andrew Garfield. <coughs> it's me, Richard Carr, with our superhero special. Coming up, we Skype Spider-Man in New York. This, this cannot transmit. You, this does not go on the web. But this will definitely go on the web because I know you. Fly into Milton Keynes. Find out your favourite caped crusaders on the streets of Aylesbury. Captain Caveman! And what's coming to a big screen near you soon? Now, before descending into Aylesbury, Matt popped into Jeannie's fancy dress shop to choose his outfit. Well, I quite like this one, but I think it suits Richard better, especially with the mask. I think this one's a bit big. Captain Caveman! Kapow! So it's been decided that this is the costume I've got to go into Aylesbury Town Centre in. Holy fish fingers, Batman. Well, now it's time to plug in a cable, pull a few levers, and switch on good old Skype and head over to New York. Well, you don't expect on our budget we can fly over there ourselves. And local actor Matthew Thomas is currently on Broadway starring as Spider-Man and fantastic Skype poos I can see it's working. So Matthew, where actually are you then? Because I, I know you've had quite a few injuries over the last year uh, putting on this show, but you appear to have two dead Spider-Men just right behind your back. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm in my dressing room. This is my, this is my dressing room. This is where I stay. So I was trying to work out when the last time we spoke, because it must be a good old year. Maybe a year and a half ago we last spoke. Um, I, uh, yeah, I've been out here since when I first went, um, I went to, uh, do the flying, all the flying workshops in Vegas for some of the, uh, for the, some of the automation stuff and then, um, came home for a bit and I think that's when I saw you and then I've been here for a year. Oh, I, can't, I can't believe it, it's been crazy. Thousands and thousands must have watched you in all the previews and since you've opened. I mean, what are the, what are the audiences making of it? We've, we've had, um, we, there is, I mean, uh, no whatever lie, we haven't had a night that hasn't been a standard ovation. So I guess when you took on the part, you had no idea it was going to be this big and, and this talked about, really, do you? There was more in the press about this show than I've ever, ever, ever seen with anything ever before. Um, even before we'd got into rehearsals. So. It was it was crazy. Like the the press. Crazy. You sound. You've got an American accent all of a sudden. Where's that come from? Well, what do you expect, Richard? Um, you know, I've got to have Here's an American accent. Your accent, accent boy. Goodness sake. Okay, I'll I'll make sure I'm speaking perfectly RP for Richard. <laughs> Richard at Bucks TV. Um, anyway, sorry to interrupt you. What? So, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, lots of publicity. Yeah, the um, uh, even when we, as I say, when we first got it, like there was so much, there was so much publicity with um, with Bono and Edge, Julie. It, it was crazy. And of course, Bono and the Edge, they've done all the music and the songs that are in the show, haven't they? Uh, yeah, no, I, a lot of people don't know that Bono and uh, Edge were involved. Um, but yeah, yeah, they they were here. They've been here. One second. They've been here since the um, since the beginning, uh, writing the music. Well, all that they wrote the music. They've been writing this thing for eight years. So tell me, Matthew, that, how did a scrawny little blonde boy from Wendover end up playing a brown-haired American hunk in, in a massive Broadway uh, musical? You tell me, Richard. You tell me. I don't know how I've got most of the work I get, but you tell me. No idea. No idea. No idea. I t certainly didn't ever picture myself even remotely playing anything slightly like a superhero, but there you go. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit lucky this time, I think. Because how many, how many Spider-Men are there, then? There's two, there's two leads, the two, two leading actors, uh, Reeve Carney, and I'm the, uh, I'm the alternate, so he does the show six times a week, I do the show twice a week, uh, and then there are, uh, I think, eight more Spider-Men who are all in the cast. They fly and flip and tumble and do all the crazy uh, stuff. Do you think I would scrub up well as one of the stunt doubles? Yeah, right. perfect. Yeah, you'd be great. Yeah, I think yeah you've been working on your uh, your shoulders, I can see. Uh, there's definitely some definition. Some definition. 
You, you, I mean, you are a super, you're a superhero, aren't you? So just talk us through what you get put through every show. Yeah, the only the the reason there are so many Spider Men is because we there is simply not enough time for us to run off stage, put the costume on, and do the moves. So there at, at times during the show, I mean, in the first act we do a lot of flying, but like a lot of it's like when we discover our powers, we wake up on the ceiling and then bounce around and jump from wall to wall, and and then there's um, some other bits. There's a lot. There's a lot of um, uh, technical stuff um, in the first act. The second act, then we, you know, um, there is there is a lot of flying. Um, we do a seduction flight, which is when we actually end up uh, to, uh, with Arachne, the character. We 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 kind of do this um, rotation over each other in the air, about you know about thirty foot, oh, no, about twenty five foot up. And then we do uh, we do all the other rescue flights at the end, and we fly out over the house in the suit and stuff. But it's um it's uh it takes a while to get there. It takes a while to get there. There's so there's so much going on all the time. It's crazy. I guess it's no wonder that, that you've had a few technical problems before you opened. I mean, if you think of the the nearest equivalent, like sort of Peter Pan in the local panto, I mean, and times that by about two thousand. Yeah, I mean, it, it. I mean, it literally is crazy. They use the same technology. Um, the, the the flying for Cirque du Soleil, like the the same technicians. Um, uh, a guy called Scott Rogers automated all of our flights and worked with Danny Isolo and um, uh, Julie and Phil McKinley, our, uh, our directors, basically to to create this, um, to create all the scenes and like the fl the flying, the flying started um, all starts with kind of um, um, what's the word um, like 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 separate points, you know? It's all done by numbers and they, they 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 figure it all out and we automate all that first and then we try the flight with a sandbag and then we put a human in it and then we fly it. I mean, it literally, it's cra it's crazy stuff. It's it's and we're flying with you know they could fly a car at the same speed they're flying us. It's it's super super crazy. And I guess with the harness, I mean, how should I put this? That probably helps you with the high notes, does it? Sometimes. Well, there's a there's a point where we actually get flipped upside down. And that's when we could use the help from the harness, but then obviously all the weight goes to the front, goes to the head, so it, like it's, it, that doesn't help us. But the harness is actually um, only bruised for like two and a half months. Like the bruising was pretty, pretty heavy, but you can't get away from it, even if you have good padding, you know, like it, it just hurts. So once, because you're getting yanked around so fast. Um, there are two different types of harnesses we wear, one that goes around in a circle that, so we can twist that way and also that way. That, that... I mean, if just even just to stand upright, like, takes so much core work, you know, like, you're, like, already, like, we're super focused. Um, even before, um, even before you've done anything, it's, like, kind of crazy, crazy hard. Uh, I have to apologize. I'm hearing my accent even more now. Now I'm speaking to you. I'm like, where have, where have I gone? Disgusting. I can't help it, Richard. You sounded like... I can't help it. You sounded Help me! It's all, it's horrendous. It's all Yankee Doodle. <laughs> I remember that one. No, no, this is uh, this is just um, I, I guess I focused so. I mean, I've had so much dialect coaching because this is a full American show, and Peter's from Queens, um, so um, I've, I've I focus a lot. Like this is somewhere in between my American. I, I can't even hear it anymore. My friends are like, you all sound so different. My friend Tom Blackburn from Wendover. He, I spoke to him the other day, and he was he was like, who is this guy? Who am I talking to? Where's Matt? Where's Matt? I want to speak to Matt. <laughs> Who's this guy? Right, well, Matthew, I'm going to stop you there. You're not boring me, well, slightly, but uh, we're going to come back to you in a little while because we need to redial really up, otherwise it's going to cost us a fortune over broadband. Now, um, how do you fancy being chucked out of a plane so you can be your superhero flying through the sky like I did a few years ago? Well, if, if that's a little bit too uh, scary for you, what about the next best thing? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's Sam putting her flying skills to the test at Air Kicks in Milton Keynes. Airkicks is a really unique facility. It's, um, it's one of the only bespoke tunnels in the country. There is another bespoke tunnel and that's in Manchester which is also owned by Airkicks. We take people from 1 to 101 and we can fly you up and down and teach you how to fly your body. It's a great Christmas present. If you want to get vouchers for it, you can get them online, www.airkicks.com. Tunnel's capable of 165 miles an hour. Yeah. So we not only teach people to fly on their bellies, we teach them to fly on their backs, we teach them to fly and sit, and then we also teach them to fly upside down. We can show you a little bit of that when we actually go in and fly. So it's a great training aid for people who want to come along and have some fun, and for people that want to progress and be world champions. 
So can anybody fly? Yeah, pretty much anybody at all. Disabled or you know bad back or anything? Yeah, um, last week we we flew um, a load of uh, servicemen for Battle Back, which is obviously with Help for Heroes, which was fantastic. Uh, we fly lots of school groups. We we yesterday we had somebody for the first time flying blind, sit flying, really? which is quite a hard discipline. We're going to do something a little bit special with Sam. We're going to try and make the camera see a little bit more of us. So obviously we wouldn't normally do this for everybody, but for you, Sam, we can do something just a little bit special. I was a bit nervous, I didn't really know what to expect, but uh, that was fantastic, it was just like flying. What an absolutely wonderful experience. Well now Matt has got his outfit, let's see how he got on in Aylesbury, finding out people's favourite superheroes. Right, obviously I'm dressed as Robin, if you're a superhero, what superhero would you be? God, I don't even know any superheroes. <laughs> Wonder Woman. Spider-Man. Batman. Batman. <laughs> okay. What, so you can uh, be my assistant? Is that why? <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. Superman. Existing Superman. Wonder Woman. I'll be Superman. Catwoman? Yeah. Let's go for Spider-Man, why not? Spider-Man? Chew back off. I don't know, dear. Literally, because he's super. Wonder Woman. Spider-Man. The one that climbs up buildings. Spider-Man? That's the one. Uh, Spider-Man. No, Wonder Woman, I think. Wonder Woman? Yeah. If you could invent your own superpower, what would that be? I'd be invisible. You'd be invisible. To have anything I want, I yeah. think. <laughs> Weather changing. Freeze time. I haven't got a clue. If I could invent a superpower. Invisibility. To be able to see long distances. I'd just be like, so that's fly. I'd be invisible woman. <laughs> I don't have a clue. Stop all the wars in the world. Uh, to be able to fly. Um, to fly. To fly? Um, I just want to fly. It'll be like walk on water or something. To rid the world of jobs worths. <laughs> what would you call your superhero? Supergirl. <laughs> Vision man. Superwoman? Yeah, superwoman. Yeah. War defeater. Now Matthew Thomas is patiently waiting in his dressing room over in New York. Um, he can wait a bit longer to be honest because he's not going anywhere. I want to show you this footage. We were out filming, where was it? Out Cheddington Way the other day and we came across this humongous spider's web and uh, there was a great big sort of formed funnel in it and everything and we had a poke about but nothing came out <laughs> which is probably just as well if it's something nasty. But if you know, if you're a sort of a David Attenborough person or something and you know what it was, we'd love to find out and, and know whether we nearly got bitten and killed by one or not. Um, yeah, info at buckstv.co. Dot UK. Well, Matthew is itching to climb back into his light crush, so let's get back to New York. Because, say, in a, a couple of months' time, you won't answer my calls and, and deny you know me, because you're mingling with all these Hollywood A-list stars and everything. I mean, even an ex-president came to see you the other night. What, an ex-president. Can you believe that? I mean, that was crazy. I met him as well. It's crazy. A lot along with Matt Damon and oh, so many. I mean, it's, that was great. I've never seen an opening night like that. That was nuts. They were like, it was a red car. There was a red carpet like you'd see at Leicester Square. The whole of Forty Third uh, Street was was shut down. There were the police everywhere. Like chopper. It was crazy. It was crazy. Insane. Well, I guess it's everybody's dream to, at some stage or another to have a weekend or or, or longer in New York. I mean, you you've, you've been living there a whole year now. I mean, it must be great. What's it like? Like, is it like the set of Friends or something? Yeah, I mean, this is like a dream come true. I I, I came here. Just before I did Britannia High, I came out here on holiday with my parents. Actually, after my audition, I got on a plane and flew out here to meet Mum, Dad, and Katie. Um, that they just finished the dancing school. They 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 flew out on the plane, um, and then I got on the second plane after my audition. I was like, I'd love to come and work in New York one day. That'd be great. Um, it's always been a dream to do a show on Broadway or at least try and get this. And and then this is like, I mean, oh God, I don't I don't even know what to say. A dream come true. I'm living in New York. It's it's crazy. I'm like I'm buzzing even when I'm saying it. Like a year later, I'm still like, still so, still feel so blessed and lucky. Well, easy. Aylesbury still rock and rolls, you know. Well, I'm coming back in September. I'm gonna go to the. Where am I gonna go? I'm gonna go to the Plow. No, I don't know. I don't know where I'm gonna go. 
Heck, what's the what's the restaurant that's on the um on the road in between Stoke Mandeville? The new one. It got burnt down and then they Oh, they the, not, oh the wall pack. Yeah, the I wall love pack. the wall pack. The wall pack's great. I'm gonna pass I'm gonna pass yeah. by the wall pack on the way back. I think. So have a drink ready for me. Are they, you, are they sponsoring you or are you trying to get a free meal when I'm you I'm trying get to get a free meal. Free meal, free meal! Free meal for me and one other. Plus one. And I've got to ask, you know, the outfit, is it is it a bit of a babe magnet? Is it good for the ladies? Do the New York girls like it? Well, um, yeah, they do. <laughs> what can I say? It feels slightly exposing sometimes, I mean, especially when we're um, especially when we're standing. We stand. There's one point when we we have a mark, which is like number twelve on the stage on stage right, and we're right next to the front audience, just in latex, you know, just in the suit, uh, which is kind of fun. And then we have to fly over the audience, you know. It's it's slightly exposing, but you know, it's um, it's Spider Man. What can, what can you say? And you always have this, you always have this fantastic way of embarrassing me completely, Richard. And I guess the interval um, is is a hell of a lot longer than a normal show because it'll take you hours to get out of your costume to have a pee. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's uh, we don't have the suit on until the. Uh, actually, I don't know if I should tell you this, but uh, there's well, no there's no pee pee break problems. So it's probably going to be in uh, New York for ages. But do you think it's ever going to sort of go further afield and perhaps tour to the UK? I mean, I actually can't give you any official information on this because well, nobody knows. I, I would presume that the plan would be to take it worldwide because it's um, seemingly very successful here. Um, and uh, it would make most business sense, I guess, to, to take it out around the world. Um, and that would be exciting because the, um, the show could play in some, some great, some great ven venues, you know. And it would have to adapt, obviously, for the, for the theatres and stuff. But um, that would be very exciting. I, I'd love to... Yeah, I'm very excited to see what happens with the show because... Um, I think it's going to be great. So what's the best thing about living in New York and the worst thing about living in New York? Okay, well, the best thing about being in New York is that you can have access to delis on every corner that are open 24 hours. You can get whatever you want, whatever food you want. You can't, you cannot starve. Like, you, <laughs> there, there is food on every corner, uh, a Starbucks in every corner. Um, I thought you'd out of it. Yeah, thanks. It's all that turkey, I mean. Uh, <laughs> or, um, yeah, I mean, probably, m most definitely the atmosphere as well, the atmosphere and the food. Um, and the thing I dislike is just being away from home, being away from my family and my friends. Um, and my dogs, my dog, my, my, my other dog, Ferdy, passed away whilst I was out here, which kind of sucked, but I now have a new dog sitting beside me, Orange. So, yeah. That's, it's, it's not one of those little rats you put in a handbag, is it? No. You want to see him? Yeah, go on, get it, get it, get him on camera. Oh. <laughs> He's he he'll grow. Good boy. <laughs> Does it walk? Because it doesn't look like it's breathing, to be honest. No, <laughs> it doesn't do anything. Yeah, no, it walks. It's pretty good actually. He's a very intelligent dog. And it's getting, he will grow. He's not going to be a small dog. Okay, well, Matthew, I, I'm getting very envious that you're over in New York. I enjoy your time um, on stage in the light crowd, and we'll, I'll catch up with you when we're back in Ellsbury uh, in September. Goodbye, Richard. Goodbye, Goodbye Richard. Goodbye, All the best, mate. <laughs> well, talking of superheroes, as we are, and it's why I'm dressed like this, it isn't a fetish of mine, honest. <laughs> the Captain America is coming to the big screen. It's coming to a cinema very soon, somewhere near you. You're really going to do this now? Whatever happens, stay who you are. Not just a soldier, but a good man. Is it too late to go to the bathroom? <laughs> You actually did it. I had some ideas about the uniform. You're gonna get so many girls. What made you so special? Nothing. I'm just a kid from Brooklyn. Well, that's it for this week. I'm off to turn back into Peter Parker, although, to be honest, I'm quite getting into this light crap. <laughs>